Roy, you must be a very proud chairman here tonight. The Linfield boardroom and beside you is the Gibson Cup with blue, white and red ribbons on it back at Windsor Park. Andy, I think it's always a proud moment when you have this wonderful old trophy back at Windsor Park um, for the 53rd time. Um, it's just been a tremendous season um, from day one when you think where we were this time last season. Uh, I think we were all at a, a real low. Um, but I have to say, you know, put it in record that the manager, his staff and the players, they came back in pre-season you know, with a real determination to, to get this club back up where it belongs. And I think we all sense that. that from day one, we had a very tough start in the league, as you know, with, with a few away games. And down at Mournview Park on that first day, a tough 1-0 game against a, a very good uh, Glenavon side. And Daniel Kearns got the winner. So then we went on a bit of a run after that, got up a good early points tally. But the players have just been tremendous this season when you think of, of, of performances all over the pitch. And to win the league with three games to go, you know, when you think back to Clevenville two years ago, going down to the last day, but to win it this year, you know, we're nine points ahead. I think it's just a real tribute to the players and what they've achieved this season. We got our noses in front, I think, around about Christmas time, and we showed great character to stay there. Um, April has been a, I think it's been three weeks of celebrations, which has been great for the fans. We won it almost down at Ballymena. We had celebrations. We officially won it here at against Crusaders and then of course we had the party day with the presentation um, against Glenavon here on Saturday so it's been a great time for the supporters in terms of the celebrations and the relief of getting over the line. It's a nice way to win the, to win the title Andy because I think it does take the pressure off everyone you know, it's not going down just to the, the last day of the season I know what's great for the media probably and maybe for, for fans sometimes but I recall that day at Cliff Mill two years ago it was such a nervous tense occasion you know and the players turned it around that day but so it has been great this month that we have been able to that win at Ballymena was really crucial. You know, going down and then they've had such a, a wonderful season and they've, they've finished up second and, and they've qualified for Europe, so they've, they've had a great season. But to go down there and beat them 1 0 at their own ground, you know, and Andy Waterworth pops up with another crucial win and goal. Um, so we knew that night, I think it was more or less done, um, albeit we needed a point maybe just to clinch it. And then to do it here against you know, the current Champions Crusaders uh, the following week just really sealed it for us all. So it's been a great month and you can just sense, you know, there's a, a sort of great feeling around the whole club. Everyone just so delighted to, to bring this trophy back. Um, and just to see that see the club after such a disappointing season last year, to see the club back up there right at the top of the Irish League, you know, was a proud time for us all. And there's been so many standout players. Um, you know, we've we've got two players uh, up for the Footballer of the Year award at the Titanic on Monday. Um, there has been so many clean sheets, 21 and 30, 37 league games. Andy Waterworth has been banging in the goals. It's been strength and depth and consistency right across the squad that has seen us across the line here, yeah, isn't it's, it? It's probably one of those seasons where you'd say there hasn't been really one standout player. There's been so many players who have performed consistently throughout the whole season. And I think, I mean, the, the board took a conscious decision, I think, during the close season. You know, we, we, we reflected with the manager where things had gone wrong last year and we give him our full backing. You know, we, know, we knew that David was determined to bring success back to this club. Um, so we give him our full backing financially to go out and bring quality players in, just to improve the squad and, and the depth in the squad. And those players who come in, I think you know, the likes of Joel Cooper and Daniel Kearns and Michael O'Connor, you know, have added real quality to the squad. But not only that, I think they've really spurred on the people who are already there. Um, so right across the whole team, people have performed so consistently. And, and you mentioned the defence, and you know, I think they deserve special credit because you think certainly from the goalkeeper, um, Roy Carl played most of the season. Um, Roy has been superb for us. What a, what a signing he has been! But that back four has been so consistent. You know, Chris Casement you know, took a lot of flack last season, but he has just been a revelation this year. Uh, and the two centre backs, um, Joyce Robinson and uh, Jimmy Callagher, you know, have been have been just superb. And Niall has played most of the season at left back, and again, super consistent. So I think that's been probably the the foundation stone for the league title win. You know, that solid back four. Um, I'm saying so many clean sheets, uh, conceded so few goals during the season. And I think we've just built on that. And then, of course, we've had the players, the Fleur players, who've been able to go up the other end of the pitch and take the chances when they've come. And it's, it's the mental strength of the players to bounce back from what was a hugely disappointing season last year, you know, to come back and, you know, to bring home the two trophies this year because the League Cup was a great success. It gave us a platform to build yes. for the league as well. I think that mental strength has been really apparent to me and certainly to the board because this is not an easy club sometimes to play at. You know, if, if, if you're here when things are going well, that's great. But when things are not going well, 
um, heads can go down, the crowd can get on your back. You know, Linfield are expected to win. We're expected to bring success to this club all the time. Um, so those players did come back. I mean, you just sense that that real determination throughout the season um, and that will to win, and that carried us over the, the line a few times. You know, you recall some of the really close games we had during the season, maybe away the likes of Uri City or away to Dungannon. Remember, big staff popped up with a with a late goal and. That's that's Linfield teams of old, you know, they play the full 90 minutes, they never know when they're beaten. And you can see that during the season. And there were other games when we just, you know, our football was just superb. And we didn't have to sort of grind it out. You know, the Fleur players really came into their own. You know, Jordan Stewart, Daniel Kern, Joel Cooper, you know, the midfield, Jamie and, and uh, Stephen Fallon, who blossomed this season as well. And Andy, of course, up front, uh, along with the likes of Michael O'Connor, took the chances when they came. So it's just been a, a real confidence. And you, I think the League Cup, when you mentioned... You know, that really did help, you know, get it in that confidence, beating Balamina. And that's when we did have to grind out, really. But it's, the confidence has just grown, I think, since then. And that has sort of culminated in this, this trophy coming back to Windsor Park. One of the main advantages, obviously, of winning this league is that um, we're back in Europe. And that is hugely important for us in terms of being on the European stage. We missed it. And it brings, obviously, financial rewards. I think European football is massive for this club, not only in terms of just the, the pride and, and playing in European competition. This club has a, you know, a very long and, and, and illustrious European history, but it's the financial return now. You know, that it's, it's just so crucial to the club going forward. We had that great Champions League tie a few years back against Celtic. Um, missing out last year, you know, hurt the club. I think it hurt us all. Um, but so it's, so it's so important, not only to be back in Europe this year, to be back in the Champions League, because I know from my own attendance at the European Club Association that that is becoming increasingly important that the revenues from European football will only increase in the future so this club needs to have that revenue but we need to build on our success domestically and try and give ourselves a platform to do better in European football because I think progression is going to be important in the future you know with a new European competition coming in in 2021 there's going to be more teams getting through to the group stages of European competition so there's no reason Andy why this club can't be challenging as clubs have done down south, to try and get through some rounds in Europe and to try ultimately to get through to the group stages of one of the competitions. And, and we missed the Europe last year and that affected us financially. Um, so it is you know, really exciting to be in that draw and looking forward to you know, several rounds of uh, European action at the start of the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the draw, which, is, which will be in Switzerland, I think on the 18th of June. Um, listen, we'll undoubtedly face tough competition. And we know that now, even some of the so-called minnows in European football, we've faced teams from the Faroe Islands, teams from San Marino. There are no easy games anymore. So it's up to us as a club to give our players the best possible chance in terms of European preparation. And that's something that, that we're looking at. If we, if we look further ahead, you know, what can we do as a club to improve? What can we do to try and make the club better? Um, so, you know, and that was one of the reasons for bringing, I suppose, Pat Fennan into the club as our new general manager, because Pat has a wide experience in football. But part of his remit is to look at can we find a model that enables this club to move forward? It might be by working, you know, bringing the, the best young players from the academy into a full-time setup, and then bringing the first team into that over a number of years. So it'll be a transition. I don't think it's something we want to jump into immediately, but we want to see certainly within two or three years we have a um, a platform here and, and we have a, a setup here that gives our players a real opportunity, so they're not at a disadvantage when they go to play these other full-time teams across Europe. It's excitement on the pitch and, and you've already touched on some of the excitement off the pitch. We've had Pat Fenlon appointed as a general manager bringing in professionalism. We've appointed recently Willie McHugh as uh, re recruitment and development. We have the exciting Midgley Park development which is benefiting not just our first team but all our other various teams. So there's a lot of excitement, positive vibes, feel good factor stuff on the pitch and off the pitch. Yeah, I, th I think I said last year at the AGM, when we were all very disappointed about the outcome of the season, that, that, that the board were determined to take the club forward. I said at that meeting that there would be changes would take place at the club on and off the pitch. I think we've made those changes, that has been in a transition over the course of the season, but I think we've brought in people who have moved the club forward. Um, and I think that's really important. And I think you, you, you mentioned facilities, and we have, I think we have some of the best facilities, no doubt, on this island at this club, both in terms of, of, of Windsor Park, but also our training facility at Midsley Park, and I think that's so important right across the club that all of our players are training there, they have the best facilities, um, and we can bring through the best young talent um, from the academy through that pathway into the first team. And I know the manager 
is very keen to try and do that, to work with, with the academy director, to work with all of the coaches. Um, because we want to bring pl more players like Paul Smith, like Tri Hume, who made his first team debut here on Tuesday night against Cliftonville and looked so assured and, and so calm on the ball. There is so much talent at this club, you know, and I think maybe in the past some of those players have left us and gone on to, to do so well at other clubs. So we want to bring them through, we want them to play for the first team. And if they do progress, then there'll be rewards for them, both as players moving maybe to a higher level, but also for this club and, and benefiting for our part in their development. You mentioned the young players. Um, th you know, this is a really exciting time right across the board at Linfield Football Club. Um, I remember a few weeks ago starting to put plans in place for what we did on the pitch here at Windsor Park on Saturday, where we didn't have just one trophy presentation. Um, we had the trophy presentation at Limf Linfield Swifts getting the under-20 league title, the under-18s Linfield Rangers got the league title, the under-16s got the Academy Niffle League, of course the Linfield Ladies are the Danske Bank Women's Premiership Champions. It's an amazing show of strength by us to be the league champions for Niffle in all five league tables. Yeah, I mean, it's, it just shows such a dominance that, that this club currently has at the minute. Um, and, and it was a really proud moment last Saturday, just when you've seen, I mean, I've been following this club for over 40 years. I don't think I've ever seen four titles being handed over on one day. Um, and to see how proud all those players were and their families were and to, to be part of this club and the, the part of that great success that we've had this year right across all elements of the club. And you also mentioned the ladies, of course, just started their, their new season, but again, building on tremendous achievements that they've made in the last few years. So it is, it's, it's a great time to be involved with this club. Uh, it's a great time to be chairman of the club, but Andy, you'll know that Linfield teams in the past and great Linfield teams have never stood still. You know, we don't rest on our laurels at this club. We have to, to, to look to move forward. There'll be other clubs looking to challenge us uh, next year, and, and we watch with interest uh, developments in other clubs. But we have to do at all times what's best for Linfield Football Club. Um, so we are making plans for the future. We are looking at, at what we can do to move the club forward. Uh, the club has set up a strategy group to, to, to bring those plans forward and we'll have consultation with our members and with supporters and hopefully within the next few months people will start to see those plans developing um, but as I say within two or three years I think you might see you know a real different setup here at Linfield. Um, again referring you know to the underage successes that pays great tribute to the coaches at all those various levels that their hard work has been awarded there's foundations being laid here all the way down through the academy and great reward for the coaches who put in all that effort and the best way, in many ways, to develop players is success, which breeds that winning mentality, which is going to do us good stead in the years to come. Yeah, I mean, I, I would pay great credit to all of those people who are involved at underage level. You know, the hours that they put in on a voluntary basis, you know, on cold winter nights here to train those young players, it's just tremendous. And I know that, 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 that our manager and, and, and Ross, our assistant manager, take great interest in all of those teams, as we all do. And you hear names being, being mentioned about how well players are doing at certain age groups, how well they're progressing through the through the academy, and that's great to hear. Um, that they want to be part of this club. I think they want to be part of something that's growing here. They want to be part of success. Um, so it's so important that we develop those those best young players. And I think we have the, the coaches in, in place there. And I think you mentioned the appointment of, of, of our new head of recruitment, Willie McKeown. And part of his remit is not just to bring the best players to Linfield in terms of our first team, but to bring the best young talent from right across Northern Ireland to Linfield Football Club because. It's important we start developing them here at a young age and then bring them through the system. And hopefully they're, they're then, like Trey Hume and others, they can come out and play for the first team here and, and really help us to push on. We pride ourselves on being a family club and I just want to turn a wee bit to the supporters. And you, you, you and I are supporters. We came through the supporters' ranks to the boardroom table. But here tonight we had a real nice family occasion where people who pay their money to sponsor the kits, they're here mixing with the players, getting their photos you know, with the trophy. And obviously on the 11th of May at the Crown Plaza will be another gala dinner when we reward our players uh, for their efforts f over the course of the season. They're great occasions at the end of a successful season to parade the silverware, get the selfies, mix with the supporters and give something back to the supporters. Yeah, Andy, I, mean, I would pay tribute to our supporters and thank them because I mean, you'll know they are so loyal. They follow this club with great passion. They're, they're with us. Everywhere we travel, should it be down south and other competitions across Scotland, uh, are, they're so loyal. Um, and even after last season, we were also disappointed, but they were back at the start of this season. The fall is all through the season that give the team their full back. And so it's great when the end of the season comes. It's great when you have silverware that you can 
engage with the supporters, bring them along here tonight, the mix with the players. You see the young young children getting photographs with the trophies with the players. So so we have we have so loyal supporters, loyal sponsors who have sponsored the same player and the same shirt for a long time. So they, they want to be part of this club. Um, and I said, I think the first time I was appointed as chairman, that I wanted to, to make sure we continue, continue that engagement with our supporters because they're so crucial. Um, this club is nothing without supporters. They're the lifeblood of the club. And I hope that we'll be attending many supporters functions over the coming weeks and months, including, as you mentioned, the Crown Plaza on the 11th of May. It'll be a great night. We're all looking forward to it. Um, that's the end of celebration. Um, but I know that we talk about celebration. I'm sure we're all still looking forward. I mean, we will enjoy what's been achieved this season, but we're already planning for next season, so you never stand still. You can never get enough celebration, and uh, you'll be a proud man as a York Star Linfield Supporters Club member to be there on Saturday night with the trophy at your own supporters club. And no doubt you and I will be out at the Raven and we'll be at the Springdale and we'll be at other places um, over the over the summer, you know, celebrating with our punters who have shown enormous loyalty in backing us this season after the disasters of last year. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a really enjoyable part of the, of the role that I have here at the club to be able to take, take the Tobies out around the supporters club movement. Because I know it gives them real pleasure um, and it sort of rewards them for, for what they've given to us this season. I've been part of York Star Club now for a number of years. They're a great club. And so this is their 40th anniversary this year. So we'll have a great night down in Monkstown on Saturday night. I know they have their Player of the Year function as well. Um, so it's good to be able to give something back to supporters because, say, without them, this club is nothing. And, and many of them have been following the club for, for, for so many years. And even this season, we've had supporters along here. I think one had just enjoyed his 100th birthday. Another one was, was, was 90. So that's the sort of loyalty that we have. People follow Linfield from such a young age. They're brought up in the Linfield tradition. And it just stays with them their whole life. And there's, I know, I know you'll also want to pay tribute to a lot of people who contribute behind the scenes, unsung heroes. Call them what you like, but this club, you know, works because of the efforts of so many people. Whether they're moving signs, whether they're contributing for the website or the program, or whether they're stewards or ball boys, there's so many people who are cogs in a big machine, and it's important that they are acknowledged and recognised, particularly after a, a very highly successful season. I think that's so true, Andy. I think um, Linfield, like all Irish League clubs, relies on, on volunteers for so much these days. And people don't realise the amount of work goes on behind the scenes, not only on a match day, but every day at this club. Uh, and it, it was very important that after the Crusaders game, there a few weeks back, on the day we clinched the league title, that we had our volunteers up here in the lounge just to thank them and recognise what they have done for us this season. Uh, so. I would thank all of them and pay tribute to them for what they've done and I know many of them again have helped us not just this season but every season and as a former volunteer at this club myself I know that you get something back from that too it's just a pleasure to be able to contribute at this club and it's important that I as chairman always recognise that It's an exciting summer ahead um, obviously there's a rest and there's preparations for pre-season in Europe and then there'll be season ticket renewals and there'll be all sorts of excitement over the summer but there's a real feel-good factor about this club at every level, from the boardroom to the changing room to the supporters, and you know that's the message we want to get out there: that there's firm foundations here, and we don't want to rest on our laurels. We want to take this club forward, short term and in the long term. Yes, I mean I'm I'm determined, and the board's determined that that we build something really special here, that that, that we build on the success of this season. We make sure that we can back in pre-season in the best possible shape uh, to move the club forward next season. But to build ahead you know, uh, beyond that, just to see how far we can take the club in terms of European competition. Um, it is a really exciting time to be involved with the club. Um, and I, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to next season already. Um, even though we've, we've one more game to go this Saturday against Coleraine. So it's a great time to be involved with the club. Um, but, but we'll enjoy the next few, few weeks. We'll have the European draw, as I said, in the middle of June. Um, we'll have a pre-season lined up. I know the players don't get much of a break now. But I'm sure they'll come back fired up to prove that not only were they the best this season, but they're all great players and that next season they can go out again and show that they're still the best. And, I mean, the motto of the club, Fortune Favours the Brave, you know, that is particularly applicable at the minute because Lauren have come into this new league and Glen Torn have got money. The, the, the challenge is going to be there. Crusaders will obviously come back stronger. The challenge is there for next season, isn't it? That challenge is undoubtedly there, and I, I think the league as a as a product is getting better, it's getting stronger. I think the quality is getting better, so 
we certainly won't rest on our laurels. I think the team committee and the manager have already started looking ahead. You know, where do we need to strengthen the team for next season? Because as all great Linfield teams have done that, you know, they, they brought in new players, the challenge of players who are already here, but also to, to try and move on to another level. So we look to see where we need to strengthen, and we'll bring players in. The manager will, will once again get the backing from the board. The fact that he has got us through the Champions League enables us to do that. Um, so no doubt over the next you know few weeks we'll, we'll be looking with our head of recruitment to see who's out there and who we can bring in to make Linfield better for next season. And, and just lastly, the manager deserves immense credit for bouncing back, having learned a lot from last year. Uh, after the tribulations of last year, to bounce back with two major pieces of silverware, he deserves immense credit for that strength to bounce back from what happened last year. He does. He's shown so much character and so much determination. Um, I mean, this is David's first job in management. Um, I think at the time he was appointed here, uh, like all appointments, it's always a risk. And his first season, um, first food season, he had achieved so much in terms of the travel. He had a very disappointing time last season, but I think he has learned from that. Uh, and we've just seen he's so determined to bring success to this club. He's followed this club as a boy, as is his family. So you know that he loves the club. Um, but he is such a fierce competitor. Uh, he's a winner. Um, and I have no doubt that if we keep working with David, giving him the backing that he needs, that David is the right man to keep taking this club forward and to bring more silverware like this back to Windsor Park. You're as proud as I am, Roy, with that trophy sitting beside us here in the trophy cabinet um, with the blue, white and red ribbons. Um, thank you for all that you've done on behalf of all the viewers who will be watching this on the Linfield Media. Thank you from the Linfield viewers watching this on Linfield Media for taking the time to you know, discuss where we're at at the minute with our supporters through the media. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, on behalf of everyone watching this, congratulations to everyone at Linfield for our success this year and uh, fortune favours the brave going forward. Thank you, Andy.